This is a big crowd. A very special hello to Wisconsin. We really appreciate it. We've had great success here. We've had tremendous success, and I'm thrilled to be back in this incredible state with the thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots, which is what you are. And if you can believe it, 59 days from now, we are going to win Wisconsin. We are going to defeat Comrade Kamala Harris. And we are going to win the White House, that gorgeous, beautiful White House. We're going to win it. And we're going to turn this country around because this country is a failing nation right now. It's a laughing stock all over the world. Over the past four years, our country has seen the sickness and corruption of the Washington swamp exposed like never before. You've seen it. You've been watching it. You watch those millions and millions of people pour into our country. We have no idea from where, who they are. We know nothing about them, and I'll tell you, many of them are bad. Many of them are among the worst in the world. Under the Harris-Biden regime, your government imported murderers, child predators, and serial rapists from all over the planet while weaponizing law enforcement to jail political opponents here at home. They do that, and they think it's wonderful. It's like third world country only. They loot the economy. They give trillions and trillions of dollars to their left-wing cronies while you pay the cost of rampant inflation, which is what's happened. Rampant inflation, bad energy policy, and just pouring out money like it was water. They run your country for their own power and profit while erasing your borders, assaulting your freedom, indoctrinating your children, and selling your jobs to China, Mexico, and all of these other foreign lands. But with your vote this election, their lying, cheating, thieving, hoaxing, and plotting will come to an end. It's going to come to an end. We're going to cast out the corrupt political class. We're going to restore our republic. And we are going to drain the swamp. And we're going to do it once and for all. We're going to get it done. Thank you very much. Here are nine steps I'll take very quickly to break the grip of this rogue regime. This is the worst president and vice president in the history of our country. There's never been anybody that's done the damage of these people. You know, I used to say, and I haven't said in a while, if you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the country, and let's include vice president because she's worse than he is because she's actually a believer. He wasn't. But if you took the 10 worst, they haven't done the damage that this one administration has done to our country. First, I will end forever the weaponization of government and the abuse of law enforcement against political opponents. Under comrade Kamala, Christians and pro-life activists are rotting in prison for the crime of Praying in public. How about the people they're arresting? Because they were praying in public. These people are sick. People like Steve Bannon and Peter Navarro, good people, were locked up for following the advice of their lawyers. And as everyone knows, the Harris-Biden DOJ is trying to throw me in jail. They want me in jail. for the crime of exposing their corruption. We expose their corruption. They go after the people that expose, not the people that do the corruption. The big news this week was that the Manhattan DA witch hunt against me has been postponed because everyone realizes that there's no case because I did nothing wrong. Did nothing wrong. Political witch hunt. It's a political attack against me by comrade Kamala Harris and Sleepy Joe and other radical left opponents for the purpose of election interference. This is all it is. My whole life, I never had anything. Now, all of a sudden, I got so many cases. Who's, who's indicting me today? Does anybody have any? Well, sir, you challenged the election. We think you should be under indictment. We challenged a corrupt election. We were right about that. And it's a case that should never have been brought, and uh, they postponed it. And nothing like this has ever happened in the United States before. It's strictly third world banana republic stuff. That's what it is. But importantly, the 
public understands this. That's why we have such a crowd today. This is a big crowd, you know. You know, they were uh, trying to say that she gets big crowds. She, number one, she doesn't. Number two, she buses the people in. You see the buses. Are, there's nobody busting. I'm sorry to tell you. We bust in nobody. We have some people from North Carolina. I think it's number — what is it? Those beautiful ladies from North Carolina are here again. Without their husbands, never have their husbands, those poor husbands. This is — what is this? 2 — 249 or something. 249. And we love them, and we're doing well in North Carolina. We left yesterday. We just got the endorsement of the biggest police group in the country, and uh, 300 — 380,000 police. I said, how many police does our country have? But it's uh, 380,000 endorsed me yesterday in North Carolina, your home state. And I just want to thank them. This is like number 250. And I never see their husbands. They're all happily married, but I never see their husbands. So I don't know what the hell is going on. They're beautiful. And they're always perfectly quaffed. That means they have money. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. It's great. And we always have Front Row Joes over here. Look at these people. Whoa! It's a lot of Front Row Joes. They've been here for four days. Thank you very much. Thank you. The spirit we have is greater than ever before. You know, we did great in 2016. We did better in 2020. But you're not allowed to say that, because if you say that, they go after you. We did better by millions and millions of votes. But neither one of them compared to what's happening now. We've never seen the enthusiasm and the, the love that we have now. This has uh, really been incredible. And if I didn't think we did well last time, I wouldn't have done this because, you know, it's a little tough life. It's not the easiest. You get shot at. Other things happen. Other routine events happen. But uh, we're going to do it for one reason. I wouldn't have changed. They asked me just a little while ago, a reporter said, sir, if you had to do it again, would you do it again? I said, absolutely, because we're going to make America great again. And that's better than my life. Right? These guys know. We know. They know. Thank you. Thank you very much. What an incredible crowd. What an incredible — nobody's ever had crowds like this, nobody, ever. And the fake news knows it. That's a lot of fake news back there. That's a lot of fake news. The public understands this, and so does every legal scholar, expert, luminary, including people like Andy McCarthy, Jonathan Turley, Alan Dershowitz, Mark Levin, Stephen Calabrese, David Rifkin, Greg Jarrett, Katie and Andrew Cherkowski, Eli Honig of CNN even knows it. They really, uh, you know, they've said very powerfully that this is a case that should have never been brought. It's an embarrassment. Every legal scholar of note has said this stuff shouldn't be happening. It's a weaponization of government. I greatly appreciate the words, if necessary. They also said, the decision will be postponed if necessary. First of all, there is no if necessary. We did nothing wrong. We're never going to let them do this. Somebody else wouldn't have taken it. I was thinking, how many people — I was with some people on the plane, and I said, how many people would have taken this? Most of them would have left. They would have said, I'm getting out of this business. But not me. I don't know. I don't know. Not me. We're up against very bad, evil people. It's an evil force. You know, we have people on the outside, and we have people on the inside. You have people, you know, countries — China, Russia, Kim Jong-un. We have lots of people. They're tough and they're smart. And by the way, a lot smarter than what we have now. We have — we have a bunch of dumb people. We have the dumbest leaders in the history of our country, in the history of the world. But you know what? They look at us and they say, uh, what the hell is going on? Did you see? Three days ago, it started again. The Justice Department said, Russia may be involved in our elections again. You see that, Mr. Congressman? Great congressman from Texas. You see that? 
Russia, it's Russia. And you know, the whole world laughed at him this time. Two and a half years, not a phone call made to Russia, not anything to do with Russia except stopping their pipeline and lots of other things that these people approved. And they said just the other day, the Attorney General, uh, we are looking at Russia. And I said, oh, no, it's Russia, Russia, Russia all over again. But they don't look at China and they don't look at Iran. They look at Russia. I don't know what it is with poor Russia. That's very, very, but they, you know what? Russia would have never happened if I were president attacking Ukraine. Would have never happened. I knew Putin. I knew him well. And, you know, he endorsed — I don't know if you saw the other day — he endorsed Kamala. He endorsed Kamala. I was very uh, offended by that. I wonder why he endorsed Kamala. No, he's a chess player. I endorsed Kamala. Should I be congressman? Should I be uh, upset about that? No? Huh? Was it done with a smile, Ron? Was it done with a smile? I think it was done maybe with a smile. I don't know. Who the hell knows? Nobody's going to figure it out. They're about 19 steps ahead of us. But this whole Russia thing, nobody was tougher on Russia in history than Trump. And the person that knows that better than anyone is President Vladimir Putin. He knows it better than anyone. And I'll tell you what, I will have that war finished and done and settled before I get to the White House as president-elect. I will get that done. We'll get it done. It's a horrible, horrible war. And the deaths are far greater than you hear. You don't hear what's happening over there. They're being decimated. You don't hear what's really happening over there. We're going to get it done very quickly. I know both of them. I know Zelensky and I know Putin. I'm going to get it done very quickly. Do you ever notice? I don't even think we try. We just give billions and billions of dollars. Does anyone ever, like, talk to Russia about, like, get this thing finished? Nobody talks. We don't have any communication, nothing. We're run by stupid people. Stupid, <laughs> stupid people. And we found that out at the debate with Joe. How did that work out? And we're going to find it out again on Tuesday night. Is anybody going to be watching? You know, she's a threat to democracy. They always say, Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. I'm not a threat. I'm the opposite. I'm going to — I'm keeping democracy what they are. She's a defunder of police. You know, when somebody on the far left is in charge of defund the police for 12 years, and then they switch, you know, three weeks ago or something, oh, we love our police. They don't love the police. They're radical left Marxists, and that's what she is. And she's got to be — you could — it's not even believable. The whole thing is — it's not believable. Defund the police, no fracking, no — we're not going to frack. You go back a couple of years, we will never frack. There will be no fracking in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania will never frack. And now you say, oh, yes, uh, we will frack. The whole thing is a con job. She got in. She was last. They had 22 people or something running. How Biden won, I will never know. To me, it's one of the greatest miracles. To me, it's a great miracle. But how the hell that guy won? But he won. And he got — in this one, he got 14 million votes. She got no votes. And then they put her in anyway. The bosses put her in because she's controlled by them. But she will be the worst president. He is the worst president in history. She will be worse than him. She will be worse than him. And Trump is never wrong. I am never, ever wrong. But just to finish off on the uh, weaponization, you know, uh, probably most of the people have heard. Just yesterday, the top spokesman, one of the top people in the U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan — that's a very respected Southern District, very, very highly respected — was heard saying and was quoted exactly Quote, honestly, I think this case is nonsense. Now, this is the boss of the whole thing. Every real estate person in New York does what Trump did. Nobody's ever been charged with this before. It's a perversion of justice. He said that the DA's office was, quote, stacking charges against Trump and rearranging things just to make them fit the case. I think it is. This is the boss. 
I don't know why they don't do something. They ought to drop it. They shouldn't delay it. They should drop it. Drop all of it. Drop all of it. I've been indicted more than Alphonse Capone. I say it all the time. He's sort of the ultimate. You know, he's the ultimate criminal. I got indicted more than him. My parents are up there. They're great people. They're looking down on me right now. I can't believe this has happened to my son. He's been indicted more than Al Capone. He would take that tough man sitting right in the front row. Stand up. Look at him. He's tough as hell. He would take him out to dinner. If he didn't like him, you were gone. You would never be found again. You'd be in the foundation of a building. You'd, you would form the foundation of a building someplace in Wisconsin. Now, Alphonse Capone led a very vicious, violent life, but according to the statistics, I am a much worse person than Alphonse Capone. I don't think so. But he also said, this gentleman said, in New York, justice system is, quote, like the Wild West. They're like idiots. They don't care. They're all political. And he said that the persecution in Georgia by Fonnie Willis. You know about Fonnie Willis, right? Has anybody? Fonnie. It's pronounced Fanny, F-A-N-I, that's Fanny. But she likes it Fanny. When she became the, whatever she became, D-A, she became the D-A. She said, my name is Fanny. <laughs> Fanny Willis and her boyfriend, right? Wade, lover boy Wade, remember? Remember lover boy? We hired him, we gave him almost a million dollars because of his tremendous talent at this particular section of the law. He never even heard of it. He was never involved in it. She gave him a million dollars, and she got no problem. I don't know. Maybe she does have problems. But it's a persecution of very good people. Forget me. I don't care about me. I care about, like, 20-something people. And she wanted to take down senators because a couple of senators called and said, what the hell is going on over there? What's happening in Georgia? What's going They They wanted to indict senators to find out what the hell is going on. Great innocent people, great patriots have been indicted by Fawny and her boyfriend, and it's a disgrace. You had people that are in their 80s. Uh, would you sign here? You know, Thomas Jefferson did the same kind of things. Alexander Hamilton, lots of people all throughout the ages. Hillary Clinton wouldn't acknowledge the election. All of these senators, like Shifty Schiff, can you imagine? Shifty, Adam Schiff, all of them, they disputed the 2016 election. It's okay for them to do it, but if we do it, it's a serious, serious crime. These people are sick. We got to get them the hell out of there. We have to win this election. Have to win this election, right? He knows. That guy knows. That guy knows. And he said, just in ending this, that the person — just so good, I have to say the whole thing, because it's so good. I mean, this is the, one of the top people in justice in the country and the boss. And he said, the persecution in Georgia by Fonny Willis is a mockery of justice. It's a joke. The whole thing is disgusting. They're just out to get him, meaning Trump. They're just out to get me. I think that's true. I don't think that's true. I know that's true. But they couldn't have picked a worse — Target, because it's made me more popular. Can you believe me? I think I'm the only person in the history of government that got indicted and my poll numbers went up. You know why? Because you know that it's fake. It's corrupt. Just like Russia, Russia, Russia was corrupt. Just like their job numbers last week were corrupt. Did you see? They added 818,000 fake jobs on to try and make their numbers look better. And they got caught by a whistleblower. Thank you, whistleblower. Thank you very much. That's incredible, right? That's incredible. 818, Jeff. And they were going to announce it, because, you know, usually you cheat for 5,000, 6,000. Them, they cheat, they cheat for 5,000, 6,000, I've heard. Never has anybody seen 818,000. And they were going to announce a correction right after the election. But fortunately, a whistleblower came in and leaked it out, and uh, that was a great thing, and should be. If that were a Republican instead of a Democrat, they'd be out of office now for what they did. That was a fraud. 818,000 jobs, that's a fraud. If comrade Kamala Harris gets four more years, you will be living a full-blown banana republic ruled by an anarchy and a tyranny. You're going to have something, and it's not her. It's the people that surround her. They're scum. They're scum. And they want to take down our country. 
They are absolute garbage. They want to take, hey, how about the J6 committee? So the J6 committee of political thugs and losers gets together and they investigate J6 for years, destroyed the lives of many people. And now it was revealed fairly recently that they destroyed and deleted all documents, all evidence, all proof. They don't have anything. You know why? Because a lot of it pointed to Nancy Pelosi. It was her fault because she's supposed to be in charge of security, and she turned down thousands of soldiers or National Guard. She turned them down, and it was so obvious. And all of the stories, many of those stories were fake stories. They were all made up. And we caught them because the Secret Service, frankly, said that stuff wasn't true. They deleted and destroyed documents. Now, I think that's a criminal act. Isn't it a criminal act? What the hell happened? When is something going to happen? How come it always happens to a Republican, but doesn't happen to them? They deleted and destroyed every ounce of documents and evidence that they did over a year and a half because it came out badly for them. And they should pay a big price for that. They should pay a big price. The moment we win, we will rapidly review the cases of every political prisoner unjustly victimized by the Harris regime, and I will sign their pardons on day one. I will sign it on day one. Right? Day one. We will completely overhaul Kamala's corrupt Department of Injustice and turn the Injustice Department back into the best law enforcement agency on the planet. Instead of persecuting Republicans, they will focus on taking down bloodthirsty cartels, transnational gangs, and radical Islamic terrorists, which words they won't even say. They won't even say any of those words. Second, I will bring back free speech in America because it's been taken away. They've taken away your free speech, and the fake news is a threat, is a threat to, to this country. They are just horrible. These are horrible people. Not everyone. I mean, I know most of them up there. Some are good. Hi, Lo, Brian. You know, some are good, and most of them are just absolutely terrible human beings. They know what's going on. You know what they'll write today? Look at this crowd. It goes from corner to corner. It's a ma I flew over, and I said, that's a lot of people down there. And you know what they'll say today or tomorrow when they write? Donald Trump spoke today in Wisconsin before a small crowd of people, small, a small gathering, a small gathering of people. They are just so bad, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, it's really hard to turn it back around unless they used to be like the police force. They'd write the truth, but they're no longer the police force. They're the police force for opposite. They're a police force for bad. They're bad, they're bad people, and they're very dishonest. And a lot of people don't understand when you're a politician like these people, like me, like others, and you happen to be a Republican or somewhat conservative, uh, they write just the opposite of what the facts are. And if you're driving a cab, if you're an accountant, if you're a lawyer, if you're something, you know, other than that, you don't know the details. When we know the facts and then the story gets written the exact opposite of what it is, you start to lose faith in the press, I will tell you. But I will sign an executive order banning any federal employee from colluding to limit speech, and we will fire every federal bureaucrat who is engaged in domestic censorship under the Harris regime. We will do that. And third is I will expel warmongers. We have these people, they want to go to war all the time. You know why? Missiles are $2 million apiece, that's why. They love to drop missiles all over the place. You know, I had no wars. Remember Crooked Hillary used to say, look at him, look at him. He's going to cause wars. No, no. My personality stopped wars. She said, look at his personality. He's going to cause wars. My personality stopped wars. We had no wars other than I finished wars that they couldn't finish. I defeated 100% of the ISIS caliphate, etc., and did it quickly. We did it in four weeks. It took them they said it was going to take five years. We did it in four weeks. We have the greatest military. I got to tell you, they're not woke. Don't worry about it. When you hear they're woke, uh, guys like Millie and some of these guys that were on the top, he's gone now, which is a great thing. He's the one that said, leave all the equipment in Afghanistan. It's cheaper. He told me that, too. That's when I didn't listen to him anymore. He said, it's cheaper to leave an airplane that cost $150 million brand new than it is to fly it out with a tank of fuel, jet fuel. 
Uh, it's cheaper to leave it behind. I said, this guy is really bad. He's really bad. You know, it's amazing, though. Not one person from that horrible tragedy of Afghanistan, not one general, not one leader in any way got fired, not one person. By, you know, Biden never fired anybody because they have the goods on them. So I fired people like crazy. I love to fire people. I love to fire people that didn't do their job. I fired a lot of people that didn't do their I fire them. You didn't do your job. I'm sorry. Say hello to your family. You're fired. Get out. We got to get some. I will expel the warmongers from our national security state and carry out a much-needed cleanup of the military-industrial complex to stop the war profiteering and to put always America first. We put America first. <laughs> so we're going to end these endless wars, endless wars. They never stop. You ever see these wars? They're going for 14 years, 20 years. They're fighting uh, ISIS for 21 years. These people are something. We knocked them out in two months, month, one month, actually. We had a good general there, General Raisin Cane. General Raisin Cane. We have great generals. We have great leaders. We have great military, and they're not going woke. You could put them in a room for two years and scream woke crap to them, and they'd walk out, and they wouldn't be <laughs> they wouldn't be changed. They're not going woke. Don't worry about our military. Fourth to curtail the power of federal bureaucrats and save your thousands of dollars, we will cut 10 old regulations for every one new regulation. And at the suggestion of a great guy, Elon Musk. Has anyone ever heard of him, huh? No? Elon. Oh, there's a rocket. Oh, there's, look, a rocket's flying. It's Elon. Now he's very good at what he does. He's going to have to save them. They have two people up there. Boeing had a little, I shouldn't say, there's a beautiful Boeing plane there. But Boeing uh, had a little hard time, as you heard. So they're going to save. Leon's going to send up a rocket. He looks forward to it. That's all he thinks about is things like that. I said, Elon, what's taking so long? Let's get going. But he'll, you watch. He'll get that problem solved. What a terrible problem. It's embarrassing. That's what's happening with our country. Everything's embarrassing. You know, we don't win anymore. We don't win anymore. We used to win all the time. We won with me. We won everything with me. We won everything. <laughs> Remember, I came to office, and they told me, they greeted me with the following statement, Sir, we have no ammunition. I said, wait a minute. We have no ammunition? No, sir. We've given it all away to our allies. Allies, by the way, they're allies, but not when we need them. They're only allies when they need something. If we were ever attacked, None of these countries, or very few of them, that we talk about all the time, none of them would come. Uh, we were just attacked by such and such a country. Listen, we need your help. Yeah, they wouldn't take your phone call. But we give away billions and billions of dollars. No, I was greeted with a statement that, sir, we have no ammunition. And I built and rebuilt the greatest military in the world and the first thing I did was ammunition. I got ammunition from everywhere as fast as you could. And I said to him, Mr. Congressman, what the hell are you saying we have no ammunition, even if it's true? You don't talk about it. Can you imagine? President Xi, thank goodness he was in a good mood. He's listening that we have no ammunition. Do you think he likes that sound? That's a beautiful sound to him. I said, why would you say it? Okay. Medic, please. Doctor, thank you. Thank you very much. Take your time. Thank you, doctor. We get the greatest service here. It's amazing the way they, they just are right on it. Amazing. And some people are out here for three days. Three days. So it's, it's really incredible that things like this don't happen more often, actually. But they always turn out to be good. They're excited. They're excited by what we're doing because we're taking our country back from these lunatics. Take your time, doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, 
I, I don't want to say too many thank yous because you saw Kamala at the convention when she got up. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I said, what's wrong with her? What the? So I don't want to say too much. Is that right, Charles? I just, I got just, every once in a while, I'll say thank you, and I mean it, thank you. But my thank you is meaningful, I will tell you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Everything good? Everything good? Everything, everybody happy? We have a good, strong person back there is getting up, yes? Okay, you tell me when. You tell me when you in the red shirt with those big muscles in your arms, those big, beautiful, beautiful person. Let me go. Should we go? You tell me when. Gets far back. These are the greatest people that will do this because they love the country. Is that okay? Is that what the okay sign is? She's okay? Say a prayer. Yeah, say a prayer. We need more prayers in this nation, I can tell you right now. That's the other thing. They want to shut down your religion. And they've done a pretty good job of it, to be honest with you. Thank you, doctor. Good doctors in these crowds. We have a lot of doctors in these crowds. There's always plenty of doctors. They're good ones, too. You know, in Butler, two of the doctors, they saved two people's lives that they thought were gone. Uh, we had Corey, the great firefighter, Corey, and he was gone. But the uh, doctors saved the other two, and they thought they were gone. They were amazing, amazing doctors. Take your time, doctor. We have time, right? Right? We have time. That's right. We're getting a good sign, I think. Is that a good sign? We're getting a lot of good signs. That's great. Good. Got some good news back there, Ron, huh? Good job. I watched your speech today. Beautiful. Thank you. Yes? Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. And just make some room for them so they can get out and hopefully come back before we're finished, because we can stay here all day, as far as I'm concerned. We'll stay here all day. Thank you very much. Doctors, thank you very much. We appreciate it.
anything happens, let us know. But at the suggestion of Elon Musk, I will create a Government Efficiency Commission to conduct a complete financial and performance audit for the entire federal government. And we will cut the fat out of our government for the first time meaningfully in 60 years. We're going to cut the fat. There is so much fat, you won't even know it's gone. Fifth, we will drain the government education swamp and stop the abuse of your taxpayer dollars to indoctrinate America's youth with all sorts of things that you don't want to have our youth hearing. Ultimately, we'll lim — and you know what we're doing here. I say it all the time. I'm dying to get back to do this. We will ultimately eliminate the Federal Department of Education and send education back to Wisconsin and back to the States. We'll send it back to the States so that Ron Johnson can run it, okay? We'll send it back here. Mr. Tiffany, we'll get to our Congressman Tiffany involved. He was — he made a good speech, too. We're at the bottom of every single list in education. You know that. We're at the bottom of every single list. And yet, we're number one in terms of cost per pupil. So. You know the expression I used once, twice, three times before, and it was very effective, actually. What the hell do we have to lose, right? We'll send our education back to the states. And you know, some states will do a fantastic job, some won't. And it's the same ones that are laggards right now. I don't want to name them, because why would we want to embarrass Gavin Newsom and some of these people? <laughs> Gavin Newsom. Why would we want to embarrass him? But that's — by the way, speaking of California, she destroyed as you know, Kamala destroyed the greatest city in America, San Francisco. She destroyed it, totally destroyed it. Then she became attorney general of the state. She destroyed the state of California. Now she's running for president. We're not going to let that happen. Six, we will not tolerate so-called equity policies that punish Americans based on race or gender. America will return to the merit principle, which has just been approved by the Supreme Court of the United States. You work hard, and you will be very successful. We're back to the merit — the merit system. Nobody thought that was ever even possible. We need merit. There's so many people that are left out in the cold, and that's not going to happen anymore. You work hard. You work diligently. You go to school. You do what you have to do. But it's based on merit. Again, you haven't heard that in many, many years. And seventh, working with Robert F. Kennedy, Jr. You know — you know Bobby. RFK, Jr. That was a meaningful endorsement. That was a great endorsement. We'll take on the corruption at the FDA, the CDC, World Health Organization, and other institutions of public health that have dominated and really are dominated by corporate power and dominated really by China. You know, the World Health Organization, they called COVID totally wrong. And I looked into it. We were paying them $500 million a year. China was paying them for $1.4 billion. We have — we don't really know what we have, because so many people have come into our country. We have no idea what we have. But let's assume we have $350 million, including 20 or 25 million criminal migrants, in many cases criminals. We have the worst — some of the worst people in the world coming into our country. Some of the worst criminals in the world are coming into our country. But we have 350 million people, let's say. They have 1.4 billion. They pay 39 million. We pay 500 million. Do you think that's a good deal? So I pulled out of it, and they came to me, and they wanted me to go back in. They wanted us to go back in, and I kept saying, no, 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 I don't want to do it. And it became actually a very popular thing. I don't — I hate to say this, but politically, it was it, like people really liked it because they knew how we were abused by them. It's run by China. It's not run by us. It's run — we pay 500, and it's run by China. Who pays 39 million? So they wanted to come back, and I said, Well, how come China's paying 39 million? They have 1.4 billion people, and we're paying for a much smaller number of people. We're paying 500. We will make the same deal as we made with China. Well, I said, That would mean we'd be paying about 8 million, right? They said, No, we will make the same. We'll let you come in for 39 million. And you know what? I turned them down. Not for that, I turned them down for other reasons, and because they weren't good. And they were dominated by China. 
But Biden came in, this stupid person came in, and he approved $590 million. Now, he knew what was going on. He knew that — well, he probably didn't. <laughs> He's really — do you think you know? I don't think he knew. Do you think somebody said, sir, we can do it for 39? You know, it's not the biggest number when you're talking trillions all the time, but it's indicative of stupidity. And she's worse than him. He is a smarter person than she is. Oh, they're waiting for the debate. You know, if I destroy her in the debate, they'll say, Trump suffered a humiliating defeat tonight, no matter what. Although they did, you know, with Biden, one of the CNN people said that about my part, they said, the Donald Trump performance tonight was the single greatest debate performance I've ever seen. Two days later, two days later, all they did is talk about how bad he was. They didn't talk about me. They didn't talk about me anymore. But uh, no, it's a, it's a crooked system, but we're going to make it a very legitimate system again. We can do that, and I think we can do it pretty easily with people like you have over here. I think we can actually do it pretty easily. We will establish a panel of top experts to investigate what is causing the decades-long increase in chronic health problems and childhood diseases, including the autoimmune disorders, autism, obesity, infertility, and much more. And Bobby's going to be very much involved in that. We're going to get him involved, because that's, that's what he likes. That's what he's great at. Isn't it great to have a Kennedy with us? Isn't that nice? And this is really — I mean, I don't want to disrespect the rest of the family, but this has been the dominant Kennedy for the last 25 years. You know, we have a — he's a great guy. I've known him a long time. He's a great guy, and he really wants what's good for the country, and to have his endorsement is a very important thing. And Tulsi endorsed us, too, almost simultaneously. And we love Tulsi. She's been fantastic. She's a woman of great common sense, actually. I've watched her for a long time. She has great common sense. I will ask — Congress to pass sweeping reforms to prevent foreign influence peddling, bribery, and corruption like we have seen with a certain family in the United States. The Biden crime family, that's the family. What the hell is happening with that family, Rod? What's going on with that family? You know, the night he spoke at the convention, uh, Congress found out that he stole $27 million. Nothing happened. Nothing happens with these people. He stole $27 million, and he was speaking at the convention. They were saying what a wonderful president he was. The worst ever in history. You know, uh, he made a State of the Union speech, the last one. It was so bad. And I turned to CNN and MSDNC. I wanted to see how bad they'd report on it, because, you know, they — it had to be bad. And I turned, and one of them said, not since Franklin Delano Roosevelt has a speech been made so brilliantly or delivered so well. He was coughing in his hand all the time. He's coughing. Ha, ha, ha. Then he walks out and shakes everybody's hand. Some people actually didn't want they went, hello, hello, sir. Hello, sir. It's wonderful to have you up there, sir. Can you imagine? You know, Franklin Roosevelt was a great speaker in a certain way. Very elegant person. Came from a very elegant neighborhood, so to speak. Very, very uh, rich and entitled, but different from these people you have today but very uh, beautiful speaker, and they compared him to Franklin. Not since Franklin Roosevelt. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Has anybody made a State of the Union like that? And I said, this is really terrible. This is really terrible. And finally, I will support modifying the 25th Amendment to make clear that if a vice president lies or engages in a conspiracy to cover up the incapacity of the president of the United States, if you do that with a cover-up of the President of the United States, it's grounds for impeachment immediately and removal from office, because that's what they did. That's what they did. You know, think of it. If he didn't go to that debate, he'd still be running. He'd still be running. To every citizen who's sick and tired of the parasitic political class in Washington that sucks our country of its blood and treasure. November 5th will be your Liberation Day. November 5th this year will be the most important day in the history of our country, because we're not going to have a country anymore if we don't win.
It will be the most important day in the history of our country. You know, I used to say that about 2016 because the border was bad, but the border was bad. It was like 5 percent of what's going on now. It was fine. And I fixed it very quickly and beautifully. And then I couldn't talk about it. I kept saying, I want to talk for the next election. Well, we got millions more votes. I couldn't talk about it. They said, sir, people don't want to hear about the border. It's in great shape. You fixed it. I said, I want to talk about the border. They said, sir, I'm telling you, nobody cares. And it's true. I used to talk about the border. They didn't care because I fixed it. But this border is so much worse. This border is at a level that there's never been a border in the history of the world that's been where 20 or 25 million people have poured in and nobody has any idea where they're coming from. Here in Wisconsin, you also need to defeat a radical left senator named Tammy Baldwin, who's bad news. Baldwin voted with Biden almost 100 percent of the time, giving you open borders, horrific inflation, the Afghanistan disaster. That's the most embarrassing day, I think, in the history of our country, right? He's nodding. I agree. And everything else, all of these problems that we have, all of the, the open borders and the people pouring in, you know, all of it, like the energy we can solve quickly, the, everything we can solve. But we have to do something. We have millions of people coming. I mean, they're They've poured in. They're here. They're here. You know, the border's been a little bit tougher lately because there's an election. That's the only reason. So the numbers are a little bit better than they were three months ago. But that's only for purposes of — the fact is, these people, these 20, 25 million people are already in our country. What they've done to us, it's suicidal. It is suicidal. What they've done to this country, nothing like that has ever — it's an invasion of our country. But running against Tammy Baldwin is a true American patriot. He really is. He's an incredible guy. I don't know. Nothing, nothing is easy. You know, you, you beat these people that are in Washington for so long, and many of them are no good. But they are hard to beat. They're hard to beat. She's no good. I, I mean, I was president for four years. I, I don't know. I'm not even sure if I ever met her. She doesn't do anything. She just votes the party line, and then she gets the party support. She doesn't do anything for Wisconsin. When I gave you the big boat contract, I gave you the biggest boat contract in years, and a lot of people didn't want it to go here. They wanted — everybody wanted it. I gave it — she never called me. She was the person — she was the one person that should have been calling me. She never called me. I gave it to you for other reasons. But we have somebody that's running — number one, he's central casting, you have to say. This guy is central casting, and he's smart, and he's tough, and he's a hero, and he's a success, and he'll make an incredible senator for you and your wonderful people who I know so well in Wisconsin. Eric Hovde is great. Come on up, Eric. Come on up. Thank you, Mr. President. Let's give President Trump a big Wisconsin hello! You know, all of us are here for one reason, and it's the reason why this man is going through all that he's gone through. He's been put through hell, attack after attack. Why I'm going through this, why you're showing up here, we love our country. We love America. And what the Democratic Party has become today are a bunch of progressive socialists that are destroying our wonderful country. They have turned our country upside down. What was right has become wrong, and what was wrong has become right. They're damaging our country economically. Under President Trump, your wages increased 7.7 percent, one of the highest growth rates ever. Under Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, they've declined by 2.2 percent because of all their inflation and reckless spending. Under President Trump, the border was almost closed, and he would have gotten the job done. Under them, who knows how many people flooding our country with criminal elements and fentanyl killing our young people. And then they push these crazy ideas like boys playing in girls' sports, 
men going into women's bathrooms, or transgendering our kids. That's right. Now, what they are experts at is lying. Kamala Harris and Tammy Baldwin are expert liars. You know, President Trump, Tammy Baldwin runs ads acting like she worked with you in getting things done in this state. I mean, it's priceless. Kamala Harris is now trying to steal your ideas. No tax on tips. They're trying to act like they are pushing it back against the invasion of our southern border. We're going to be tough on the border. Right. Where have you been? They've pushed to defund the police. They never stood with the police. Now they're trying to act like they're tough on law enforcement. Everything they've said has been a lie. And on top of it, they're corrupt. They are corrupt. Tammy Baldwin rails against Wall Street, and yet she lives on Wall Street with her Wall Street executive partner and taking money hand over fist. So that's what we're up again. Now, folks, as President Trump said, we have 59 days. This is the time. We can't go another four years what they're going to put us through. I'm going to tell every one of you, you have to walk away from here today. You have to grab every neighbor you know who's in the middle, every family member that you know that's in the middle, every friend. You got to sit down, you got to talk to them, and you got to get them to come over to our side for President Trump and me to bring this country back. So, are you ready? Are you ready to fight for your country? Are you ready to save the American dream? Let's go get them. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Eric. Great speech. Eric, thank you very much. That was great. He'd be a great senator. He'll be with another great senator, a friend of mine for a long time, Ron Johnson, who's here and made a wonderful speech. Thank you, Ron. Ron made a wonderful, wonderful speech. And you have uh, a congressman from Texas that's here. He's very special. He's been with me from day one. He would be with me even if I did a lousy job, perhaps. But he likes the job I've done. He literally is camped out in Wisconsin. His name is Troy Nels, and he brought his brother. I believe they're twins. You certainly look like twins. Huh? He's better looking than you, actually. But Troy is uh, amazing. His brother's Trevor. And uh, what Troy has done is incredible. He's literally very popular in Texas. He's a very powerful, wonderful congressman in Texas. And he's come here, and he's staying here, and he's working so hard. And I said, what are you doing? He says, we got to get you elected. If you win Wisconsin, you're going to win the whole thing. This is a big deal. Wisconsin's a big deal. So I remember that, Troy. I know it. I've been hearing all about Troy. He's doing meetings and speeches and everything. And and you know, it's uh, amazing. He's back in Texas. They love him even more for what you're doing, because they know exactly. We're doing very nicely in Texas, to put it mildly. We're winning by about 16 points or something. But uh, this is a big one, so thank you very much. I appreciate you both very much. Thank you. And uh, a man who I watched his speech, he did a very, very good job, Tom Tiffany. Where's Tom? Tom. Great job. Great speech. Thank you. I watched it from the plane, Tom. Very popular guy, very good guy, very great congressman. Wisconsin GOP Chairman Breyer. Where is Brian? Brian Shimming. Brian, thank you very much. He's doing it. Are we winning, Brian? I think so, right? You've been fantastic. Thank you, Brian. Right from day one. Door County GOP Chair Stephanie Susek. Stephanie? Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Great job. Pierce County GOP Chair Stephanie Poton. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. To Stephanie. And Marathon County GOP Chair, where are you? Kevin, where are you?
Kevin, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kevin. Also with us is famed country singer, and she wrote some songs that have been top of the line and a winner of awards all over the place, Gretchen Wilson. Where's Gretchen? Gretchen, thank you very much. Great job. Great job. Do you want to come up, Gretchen? Okay, come up. Come up. Come on. What the hell? It's a Saturday. We have all day, right? Come on. Thank you. Hello again, Wisconsin. My name again is Gretchen Wilson. I'm a Midwesterner. I come from a very small town in southern Illinois. I grew up very much like Senator J.D. Vance. I had to work hard and fight my way out of poverty just like many other Americans have done. But this is what I was taught to do, to earn my way. Since then, I've done the impossible. I am now a Grammy award-winning country music artist, a producer, a songwriter, and most importantly, a mom. Now, back in the day, my family were all Kennedy Democrats, but that's when the Democrats were on the side of the people. Once I started paying attention to what was really going on, I realized the Democratic Party left us. As a songwriter, I pay close attention to words, the words that are being used and the words that are not being used. I urge all Americans to pay close attention to what you are hearing and not hearing from the media, because the issues that are most important for our survival are what we're voting on. I'm here today to entertain you, but I'm also here today to show my support for the only team in this race that is telling you the truth. My story isn't really that rare, but the American dream that I have been fortunate enough to find will most certainly be lost forever if we do not show up and vote for freedom in November. It is on us. Let's make sure we the people do all we can to save our country by voting for President Trump and J.D. Vance. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Gretchen. Great. That's great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, Gretchen. As borders are, Kamala Harris let in over 20 million. They're now saying the number could be 25 million illegal aliens from 168 different countries. Most people don't even know that you have that many countries coming from prisons and jails, insane asylums and mental institutions, and terrorists at a level that we've never seen before. You know, I told this a few times. Uh, we were, during the Border Patrol is fantastic, and ICE, and our whole thing with the police officers, they're all, these are people that are brave and great, and they really want to do their job. But they came out with the Border Patrol, a study on terrorism, and they said in 2019, my year, they said not one terrorist came into the country. Now, I don't really believe that. It can't be that good. It can't be, because now we have thousands coming in. But the fact that they'd even say that, and they didn't do it for me, they just did a report. They said, not one terrorist. 2019, check it out. They said not one terrorist came into the country. Now we have thousands and thousands and thousands of terrorists pouring into our country at record levels. And it's going to end very badly. It's going to end very badly. We got to get them the hell out of here. We got to get them out of here fast. What they've done in allowing maybe 25 million people into our country, it should be illegal. They're destroying. It should be illegal. Maybe it is illegal. They're destroying our country. They're ruining our country. In Aurora, Colorado, entire apartment complexes are being taken over by armed Venezuela gangs with weapons the likes of which even the military doesn't see. They're terrorizing residents and they're just menacing the whole state. But they are menacing that community and the people are petrified. Even the sheriff, he's trying his best, but he's got a small force by comparison. This is like a military force, and they're vicious, violent people. By the way, 
Venezuela crime is down 72 percent. Crime is down all over the world because they're sending their criminals, not just South America. From all over the world, they're sending their criminals. They're sending people in jail for murder and drugs and everything else. They're sending them into our country. They're getting rid of them. Crime's down all over the world. Our crime is through the roof. And you haven't seen the migrant crime yet. It started and it's vicious, but you haven't seen the extent of it yet. They're just getting settled in. Colorado is a total mess with a governor that has no idea what to do. He has no idea. He's confused. He's afraid of the migrants. But he doesn't want to say it because that's a bad thing to say if you're a Democrat. You know, they put you right out of business. He fears the policies of Kamala, but doesn't want to lose his base or his job. He's afraid to say anything about it. Colorado began the threat to democracy against me, where they tried to unconstitutionally remove me from the ballot. I was the leading person in the whole country, leading everybody by a lot. And they said, let's remove him from the ballot. And then they say, I'm a threat to democracy. Think about that. But Colorado was the one that did it, at the behest of the governor, probably. Many people in Colorado were absolutely angry at it. They didn't like it. Even Democrats and liberals, they said, that's terrible. You can't, re you can't do that. Democrats did it. The concept of taking the number one person in the Republican Party by far and taking them off the ballot so that the Republicans don't even have a nominee, because this was very far down the line. The case for me was won at the United States Supreme Court quickly and unanimously, and the governor, Jared Polis, had no idea what to do or say, never apologized, never did anything. They are radicals headed up by a radical governor in Colorado that has no clue how to solve this influx of crime into his state. And by the way, Colorado is one state. It's much worse in other states. But in Colorado, they've taken over. I mean, in Colorado, they're so brazen, they're taking over sections of the state. And, you know, getting them out will be a bloody story. Should have never been allowed to come into our country. Nobody checked them. Nobody checked. Were they criminals? Were they from jails? We have them pouring out from jails. We have the worst criminals in all of these countries. 168 so far are registered, 168 countries. They're in our country, and they said, if you come back, you will be executed. You will be killed immediately. Not going to be easy, but we'll do it. But they have no clue how to solve their influx of crime in Colorado or anywhere else. But far more importantly, Heading this governor's way are numbers of bad people that nobody will ever believe. That's just a little, small group of people that are taking over. These people are tough. I always say they make our criminals look like nice people. At the time it happened, people said I would win Colorado. Colorado's traditionally not a Republican state. But I was actually tied and leading in polls in Colorado because people were so incensed at what this governor and his cronies had done by trying to strip the Republican Party of their candidate. So if I don't win Colorado, it will be taken over by migrants and the governor will be sent fleeing. Because the people of Colorado should really do something that would be a classic. They should do a major protest vote in favor of Trump to reject the threat to democracy that they caused by an attempt at ballot removal. And Illinois, is really the same thing. And Maine, another one, I mean, I don't understand. You know, I did very well in Maine, but they did that. The governors did that. Illinois is one of the worst-run states in the country, headed by a governor, J.B. Pritzker, whose family threw him out of the family business, so he became governor instead. And his state is going to hell. It's horrible what's happening. So if you live in Chicago and your state is going to hell, vote for Donald Trump. Just vote. We'll do a good job. We'll clean it up. We'll get rid of that horrible crime. You know, in uh, Labor Day weekend, Chicago had 117 people shot, 17 died. This is worse than Afghanistan. This is worse than any place. It's a war zone. Other states should also vote for Trump in protest because their way of life has been changed in America. Protest it. Go back to the Democrats in four years, but you won't because we'll clean up this mess. And you'll say, we're never voting for a Democrat. We like Trump and his friends. 
Migrants and crime are here in our country at levels never thought possible before, never even thought possible. You're not safe even sitting here, to be honest with you. I'm the only one that's going to get it done. Everybody's saying that. I'm starting to believe it myself. But they're saying the only one that's going to get it done, and I will tell you, I'm going to get it done. And so go out and do that protest. If you're Maine, if, you, if, if you're in Illinois, if you're in any state, because you're being overrun by criminals. You're being overrun by people. They're not being checked. They're not being vetted. They're taking over our country. They're forming armies in our country. And Aurora is just one example of many locations. Other places are probably even in worse shape. We just haven't heard about them yet. And a lot of governors don't like talking about it, like this guy Polis. He said, no, no, don't talk about it. We don't want the world to find out. The world has found out. The world has found out. They have all the pictures. They have all the, the tape that you want. I've never seen anything like it. They walk in. They throw people out of their apartments. They take over the whole building. Now they take over another building. They're in the real estate business. Isn't that nice? They were in jail two months ago. Now they're in the real estate business in Colorado. Just two days ago, right here in small town Wisconsin, what a beautiful place. However, a member of a savage Venezuela gang was arrested for sexually assaulting a woman and attacking viciously a child. He's charged with suffocation, child abuse, sexual assault, and many other things. Bad guy. Shouldn't be in the country. Came out of jail. Came out of jail in his country. I will get these monster criminals out of Wisconsin. I will get them out of our country. We're going to get them out fast. We're going to get them out fast. Very fast. They'll soon be back on the streets and jails of Caracas, Venezuela, and other places from where they came. Think of it, though. Venezuela crime is down 72 percent. People are saying, oh, isn't it wonderful, Venezuela? In fact, if they win, we're never going to lose touch with each other if they win. But we won't come here. It'll be too dangerous. We will have a meeting. We will have a rally in Caracas, Venezuela, because it will be safe by comparison to Wisconsin. Okay? So we'll all hop on a flight. We'll go over to Caracas, Venezuela, or one of hundreds of other countries that are safer than the U.S., because our country is a very unsafe country now. And we're really, we're really subject to what these people want to do. And these are violent people. These are people that were criminals at the worst level in their cities all over the world. 22 people out of the Congo in Africa. It's not just South America. People think it's Honduras and Guatemala, El Salvador, Mexico. It's not. It's countries all over the world. They're coming in. 22 people from the Congo in Africa. Where are you from? From the Congo. Oh, that's nice. Where, where did you live? Uh, jail. Oh, what did you do? It's none of your business. That's what they told the people. It's none of your business. You can imagine what it is. But from Africa, from the Middle East, from Europe, from Asia, they're coming in from everywhere. They're getting rid of their criminals. They're bringing them into the United States of America, our beautiful country, our now failing country. It's a failing country under these lunatics. And they br they're bringing them in at levels that nobody's ever seen before. Ron Johnson sees it. He sees it all the time, and he gets sick over it. But we're going to do something about it, Ron. We're going to get it done. We have to. We have no choice. It's not like we have a choice. Not like we can say, oh, well, we'll live with it. You can't live with it because you're going to be killed. You're going to. These are killers. But from all over the world, you take a look at the crime statistics. You take a look at the jail statistics. The jails are being emptied out. The mental institutions are being emptied out and insane asylums. And then the press, when I say Dr. Hannibal Lecter, the press says, oh, why did he mention that? They're wise guys back there, just wise guys. They say he rambled and started talking about Hannibal Lecter. What does that have to do? That's a representative of people that are coming into our country. Dr. Hannibal Lecter, he will have you for dinner. You know that? He will have you for dinner. No, but this is what's happened. This is what's happening at levels that nobody can even imagine. Millions and millions. J.D. Vance is doing a phenomenal job. Today, he said 25 million. He's doing a great job. You know, I picked the best athlete. I had great people, and great people. We have so many wonderful people. Marco was incredible, and Tim Scott was incredible, and you have a governor. 
in a certain place that has a lot of oil. You know who I'm talking about. How good was he? And you have uh, just great place, places and great people. And I got to know so many. I picked J.D. J.D., and I could have picked anyone. They would have been great. But J.D. had an incredible life. He had a mother who was very addicted to prescription drugs and not a lot of help from the father. And he went to — he was a great student, however, very smart. He went to Ohio State, graduated at the top of his class in two years. I said, two years? That's pretty good. I never heard of that. <laughs> then he went into the military. Then he came out, got accepted to Yale Law School, which is very hard to do without a father, without a father that has connections. Very hard to do, almost impossible. The reason he was accepted was that he was really smart. He was smart as hell. And then he worked, I guess, essentially on Wall Street or Wall Street alternative or equivalent, and did very well. And then he ran for office. I endorsed him, and he became a senator from the great state of Ohio, and he's doing amazingly well. But he's a brilliant guy, and the press went after him for about the first week, and then they gave up because he has the answers. He's really uh, — he's, he's conservative, but he really is like all of us. We're all sort of conservative, but what we really are is we have common sense, right? We have common sense. Common sense is more important, Ron, than anything else. We need common sense. We'd like to have borders. We don't want crime. We want good schools. We want nice housing. We want low interest rates, you know. It's called — we don't want wars. Ideally, we don't want wars. Everyone thought I'd be a warmonger. I was the opposite. But I did scare people away from having wars. And you know what I did? I used tariffs. I heard two countries were going to have a war. I called them both. I said, here's the story. You have a war. You're going to have to pay a 200 percent tariff to do business in the United States. And they'd both say — the leaders would say to me almost simultaneously, oh, we've decided to make peace. I stopped so many wars. They went to Viktor Orban, the fake news. They went to Viktor Orban, and they said, why is the world such a mess right now? It's flaming up in the Middle East and Israel and what's happened with Russia, Ukraine. Why is it? They said, you need Trump back in. He said, Nobody understood Trump. China was afraid of him. Russia was afraid of him. You know, I stopped the Nord Stream pipeline, Nord Stream 2. And uh, then they say I was very friendly with Russia. I got along good with sort of everybody, but everybody paid up. They had to pay up. We've changed so many trade deals that were so bad. USMCA, we made that one. That was a great one from the worst trade deal we ever had. NAFTA, the worst trade deal any country probably has ever had. But we did a really good job. But J.D., we're very proud of him. And uh, he made a speech this morning, and I heard it was great. And uh, I think you will agree, Ron, he's doing a fantastic job. As Vice President Harris cast the tie-breaking votes that caused the worst inflation in American history, costing a typical family $28,000. Think of that. Yesterday, it was announced that we lost 438,000 full-time jobs in August. We lost 400 — almost half a million jobs in August. We lost 24,000 manufacturing jobs, nearly 6,000 auto manufacturing jobs. And if I'm not elected, you will not have an auto industry at all. Volvo today announced they're getting away from the electric. Other companies announced we have paid trillions of dollars in subsidy for making these cars. And the market's not there. It's not there. It's a shame. And I'm a big fan of electric cars. I think it's great, but it's got a market. But I also want gasoline-powered cars, and I want hybrids. I want everything. Hydrogen is maybe coming. We want everything. The real unemployment rate rose to 7.9 percent in August. Did you know that? 7.9 percent. Our country's going down. Last month alone, American-born workers lost 1.3 million jobs. And migrants gained 635,000 jobs in a single month. Every job that we've gained has been replaced, not by American citizens, but by illegal migrants. Did you know that? Every job that was created over the last fairly short period of time was taken by illegal migrants. And I will tell you this, the black population and the Hispanic population are being decimated by these people coming in unchecked, unbalanced. They're coming in and they're taking the black population and the Hispanic population jobs. And next is going to be unions. You watch the unions suffer. 
The auto workers are not going to exist in a year and a half or two years because of what that fool did. Who's the head of the auto workers? He's a fool. Since the start of this year, nearly one million Americans joined the unemployment rolls. Nobody knows that. And now Kamala is pushing the largest individual small business tax in American history. And she said 70 to 80 percent tax is probably a good idea, a bold idea that should be discussed. 80 percent. Good luck with your small business. She and sleepy Joe Biden waged war on American energy, opened up the Russian pipeline Nord Stream 2 after I had closed it. It was done. It was closed. As soon as he came in, he approved it. But he shut down the Keystone XL pipeline, Keystone. He shut it down, 48,000 jobs, and it was a very important pipeline, actually, but we'll get it open. But think of it. I shut down the biggest pipeline in the world, the Russian pipeline going to Germany and all over Europe. I shut it down. It was done. He gets in. He approved it. He approved it. But he shuts down the pipeline in this country, the XL pipeline. She re-entered the horribly unfair to the United States Paris Climate Con Accord. It sounds so nice, the Paris Climate Accord. Such a nice name. Oh, isn't that beautiful? We want the Wisconsin Accord. We want the people of Wisconsin, not the people of Paris. That Paris Accord was going to cost us $1 trillion, and other countries like China, it was considered third world. China, it's a developing nation. They didn't have to pay anything. India didn't have to pay anything. Russia didn't have to pay anything. France didn't have to pay anything. Nobody had to pay, only the stupid United States. We paid $1 trillion. And I closed it down, and as soon as he got back up, he opened it at even worse terms. Kamala Harris and the communists left have unleashed a brutal plague of bloodshed, crime, chaos, misery, and death upon our land. And it's only going to get worse. As Vice President, Harris has presided over a 43 percent increase in violent crime, including a 58 percent increase in rape. She supports to fund the police. And during the 2020 riots, she encouraged her followers to donate to bail criminals, looters, arsonists, and murderers. She was trying to get the murderers out of jail, right? You're shaking, right? Everybody now knows it. And this is a person that wants to be President of the United States, and she didn't get a vote. As California Attorney General, she redefined child sex trafficking, assault with a deadly weapon, and rape of an unconscious person as totally nonviolent crimes. Oh, that's nice. Kamala supports states being able to take minor children and perform sex change operation, take them away from their parents, perform sex change operation, and send them back home. Can you imagine you're a parent and your son leaves the house and you say, Jimmy, I love you so much. Go have a good day in school. And your son comes back with a brutal operation. Can you, can you even imagine this? What the hell is wrong with our country? Her running mate, Tampon, Tampon Tim. Did you see he signed a bill where tampons will be in every boy's bathroom? Isn't that nice? And he's a whack job. You know, he, he, they have a standard phrase that J.D., who's very solid, and I happen to be very solid. I have other problems, perhaps, but I'm a very solid person. But J.D.'s solid. I'm solid. They said this was just a soundbite. They gave it to all the fake news, the fake news. They're weird. No. He's weird. He is really weird. This guy. Can you imagine? I'm weird. It's just, you know, they do sound bites. And they give them, they gave one the other day, a manufactured, uh, the vote was manufactured. It's not a term that's used politically. Every network headed up something about the vote was manufactured. They follow the lead of these people, but we've got the lead. You know what? We've got the people. We got to stop the cheating. If we stop that cheating, if we don't let them cheat, I don't even have to campaign anymore. We're going to win by so much. In the meantime, too big to Rick. Too big to Rick. But he even signed, Tampon Tim, even signed a law that allows abortion in the ninth month and babies to be executed after birth. In other words, a baby is born, 
And what do you do? The mother decides she doesn't want the baby. You execute. That's not an abortion. That's an execution. And nobody wants that. There are six radical left states that allow that, too, that nobody wants it to happen. Nobody wants to see it happen, where they're allowed to execute the baby after birth, and nobody talks about it. And, you know, we did a great thing when we got Roe v. Wade out of the federal government, got it back to the states, and now the states are all voting. And uh, like Ronald Reagan, I happen to go with the exceptions. I think it's important, but other people, you have to go with your heart, but uh, most I'd say most people, 85 percent Republicans, they go with exceptions for rape, incest, life of the mother, but the three exceptions. But uh, nobody wants to happen eighth month, seventh month, ninth month, but after birth, and you have after birth, and more people, more, more states are even planning on doing that. Nobody wants that. And now what we're doing is because of what we've done, we've got — they wanted — all the great legal scholars wanted it out of the federal government, Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives, everybody wanted it out because it didn't belong there. They wanted it to go back to the states. And now the states are all voting. And frankly, some of those votes are coming out very liberal. If you look at Ohio, if you look at Kansas, if you look at some of the states. But the people are voting, and they're voting. We put it in the hands of the people, and they're voting. And that's the way people have wanted it for many, many years. And. I'm just uh, happy that we had Supreme Court justices that had the courage to do that, because that has torn our country apart for 52 years. And now the people are voting. From the moment we take back the White House from Comrade Kamala Harris, I believe we are going to have the four greatest years in the history of our country. We're going to turn it around fast. Starting on day one, I will seal the border and stop the migrant invasion of our country. We will carry out the largest deportation operation of criminals in the history of America. We will defeat inflation, and we will make America affordable again. We will make America the dominant energy producer in the world by far. That's called drill, baby, drill, right? Drill, baby, drill. And remember, we have more liquid gold under our feet than any other country. In 12 months, I will cut your energy costs in half. That means Wisconsin. We will cut it in half. And that includes your heating, air conditioning, electricity, gasoline for the cars. We'll cut it in half, and we'll do it easily. It won't even be — I think we'll do better than that. 12 months. You can hold me to it. Hold me to it. I want you to hold me to it. We're going to cut it in half. I will turn the United States into a manufacturing superpower more than it has ever been. And other countries — other countries that make us pay a heavy tax to do business with them will be charged the same tax when they send their product into the United States. And we did it to a pretty strong extent when I was president, and we were going all the way. Then we had to solve the COVID problem. But we will uh, — we will be doing that. It will be called the — Reciprocal Trade Act. It's reciprocal. So if China or any other country charges us a 100 or 200 percent tariff or tax, then we will likewise charge them a 100 or 200 percent tariff or tax in return. And my message is simple. Make your product here in America and only in America. So we're going to charge tariffs to all these foreign countries that are coming in and ripping us off and taking our jobs and destroying our manufacturing. And it's what they do. We're going to do the same as they do. And, you know, some of these people that are making decisions in Washington, they're very suspect, I can tell you. Not this group. This group. That's why they're here. They hate what they see happening. We're not going to be taken advantage of anymore, just as we made great inroads and progress four years ago. Nobody ever made such progress as we — we had the greatest four years. We rebuilt the military. We had the largest tax cut in history, the largest regulation cut in history. We had no wars. We had no wars. We didn't get into any wars. Who would think, here I am, we didn't — you know why? Because they were afraid of us and they respected us. They know not to mess with wars. And as I said, and I say it over and over again, Ukraine and Russia would have never happened. Israel would have never been attacked on October 7th. Iran was broke. They were broke. Now, you know, they're after me. So I should say, oh, I love Iran very much. I don't care. I got to do the right thing. 
Iran was broke. They had no money for Hamas. They had no money for Hezbollah. They had no money for terror. Any of the many 28 different terror organizations, they had no money. They had no money whatsoever. They wouldn't have ever even thought about doing Israel. All of the things that have happened, and you know what else wouldn't have happened? Inflation. You wouldn't have had any inflation. Inflation was caused by energy going through the roof because these people were so stupid when they took over my energy policies. And energy was going through the roof, and then they went immediately back to my energy policies, Ron. They went immediately back. But what they don't understand is, by now, I would have had energy at four times the amount that we had four years ago. And we were, four years ago, energy independent. Who would believe that? Now we get our energy from Venezuela. Did you see? They took his plane the other day. They took Maduro's plane. Maduro's the dictator in charge. They took his plane. I said, oh, that's so serious. Now we can get a nicer plane because we buy our energy. So we give them billions and billions of dollars, and they take back his stupid old plane. This is the thinking we have in our country. We shouldn't be buying oil from Venezuela. It's unbelievable. But we're not going to watch our wealth and our jobs get ripped away from us and sent to foreign countries. And Wisconsin will be one of the biggest beneficiaries, just like I gave you the Marinette shipbuilding contract that everybody in the country wanted. Every state wanted it. I'll probably lose a couple of states because I gave it to Wisconsin. I'll probably lose some states because I gave it to Wisconsin. But my plan is that if you open your factory in Wisconsin or Pennsylvania or Michigan or Minnesota or anywhere else in the United States, you don't pay a tariff or a tax. But if you move your production outside of the United States and send it back here, you have to pay a very substantial tariff. We're going to supercharge our country. We will charge other countries when their product is sent into our country. And why shouldn't we? That's exactly what they do. That's what, that's what made China strong. When Elon goes and wants to send his cars into China that are made in the U.S., they say, we don't want them. You have to build your factory in China. Then we'll accept you. But we're saying to China, you want to build cars? You want to send cars here? You're going to build your factories in the United States. You're not going to send them through Take our jobs, take everything else. Got to build them in the United States. You can open up a beautiful, brand new factory with American labor. The result will be that everybody in the world will want to produce right here in the good old USA. We will be able to build ships again. We will be able to build planes again. We will be able to build our military again, all from within, all from within our country. You know, when we build a plane, the F-35 fighter jet, I bought a lot of them for countries all over the world, actually, but I bought a lot of them. We have parts made in all different countries, and then they're assembled here. We want to make the parts here. What would happen in case of a war in two of those countries we're fighting? And we say, by the way, you can't get the wings anymore. The wings are made in Turkey, and other parts are made in other countries. It's so crazy what they've done. And they did that to help out other countries. It's now time for us to help out our country. In the words of a very great but highly underrated president, William McKinley, I am a tariff man standing on a tariff platform. And he said that throwing open our market without protection was, quote, it destroys the dignity and independence of American labor, diminishes its pay and employment, decreases its capacity to buy products of farm and commodities of the merchant, it will bring widespread discontent. It will revolutionize values. It will take away more than half of our earning capacity of brain and brawn. Worse than that, it will take away from the people of this country who work for a living, and a majority of them live by the sweat on their faces. It will take from their heart and from their home, and it will take from their hope. Their final thing is their hope. It will be total self-destruction. This is the man that wanted tariffs. He wanted tariffs to be taken from foreign countries. And you listen to some of our stupid people and some of the very stupid people in Washington, D.C. We don't want to charge tariffs. That's not — it's going to uh, increase inflation. China paid us hundreds of billions of dollars, and we had almost no inflation. This group that came in 
They had the highest inflation in the history of our country. We took in billions and billions of dollars from foreign countries in the form of tariffs that I hadn't even gotten started yet. We'll get, be a rich nation again. We'll be able to do what we want to do. We have to do the tariffs. We, we have been treated so badly, mostly by allies, if you want to know the truth. Our allies treat us actually worse than our so-called enemies. But we have been treated so badly on trade and other things, on military. We protect them, and then they screw us on trade. We're not going to let it happen anymore. We're going to be a tariff nation. It's not going to be a cost to you. It's going to be a cost to another country. I heard Kamala the other day, Comrade Kamala. She said, oh, if you do that, he's raising your taxes. No, no, no. I'm not raising your taxes. I'm raising China. And all of these countries in Asia and all over the world, including the European Union, by the way, which is one of the most egregious, they don't take our cars, they don't take our farm product, and we have a $300 billion trade deficit with them. And they're going to have to pay a price now, because we've been supporting them for a long time, and it's no longer sustainable. So I'm a tariff president. I'm not a tax increase president, because we're going to lower your taxes. When I'm back in the White House, we will pass large tax cuts for workers, and also no tax on tips. No tax on tips. I will fight for you and fight for the ability. We are going to protect Social Security. We are going to protect Medicare. And we're not going to have any cuts. We're not going to have age increases. She's going to have to end. You know, a lot of these migrants that are coming in are going on to Social Security and Medicare. Your programs are going to be destroyed. You're not going to be able to get in your hospitals. You see the lines of people? You can no longer get in your hospitals. You feel sick. You want to go to your hospital? You have hundreds and even thousands of people trying to get into a hospitals. They're ruining your life. They're ruining your lifestyle. They're ruining your way of life. I will have no tax on Social Security benefits for our seniors, because you've destroyed our seniors with your inflation. Inflation has destroyed our seniors and their Social Security. We will terminate the Green News scam and spend that money on roads, bridges, real infrastructure, and paying down debt, not fake infrastructure that has caused massive inflation and has been of no benefit to our country. And I will settle the war in Ukraine. I will end the chaos in the Middle East. And I will prevent World War III. And I'm the only one that can do it. I will prevent World War III. And if I don't win this election, Israel with comrade Kamala Harris at the helm of the United States is doomed. Israel is doomed. That's a tough statement. Israel will be gone. One year, two years, Israel will no longer exist. I better win. I better win or you're going to have problems like, like we've never had. We may have no country left. It may be our last election. You want to know the truth? People have said that. This may be our last election. You got to get out and vote. This could be our last election. It'll all be over, and uh, you got to remember, I don't want to say this because they say it's braggadocious, but if you look at the record, it's true. Trump is always right. I hate to be right. I hate to be right. I'm always right. I hate to be right. I don't want to be right about the things that I predicted, but I predicted what was going to happen at the border. I predicted all of the inflation. I predicted everything that's happened to our country. I predicted Israel. Putin would have never gone in, but I said, if I'm out, he's going to attack Ukraine, but he would never have done it if I were there. We will rebuild our cities, including Washington, D.C. Our cities are a mess, and they're very dangerous places. We're going to make them safe, clean, and beautiful again. And we will keep the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency, and it is currently under major siege. Many countries are leaving the dollar. They're not going to leave the dollar with me. I'll say, you leave the dollar. You're not doing business with the United States because we're going to put 100% tariff on your goods. Sir, we would like very much to get back to the dollar immediately. Thank you very much. It's so easy. I don't know. It's so sad because nobody — Biden doesn't know he's alive and she's worse. This is how we will end the era of inflation, mayhem and misery under Kamala and Crooked Joe, and unleash safety, prosperity, and peace for Americans of every race, religion, color and creed. Together, we will deliver low taxes, low regulations, low energy costs, low interest rates, and low inflation. 
so that everyone can afford groceries, a car, and a home. We will stop the invasion, end migrant crime, support our great police, strengthen our wonderful military, build a missile defense shield around our country, keep critical race theory and transgender insanity the hell out of our schools, And we will keep men out of women's sports. Did you see the Olympics? You had two boxers that transitioned from men to women. I wish them well. They transitioned and they were fighting. It was boxing for the gold medal. And the first match, it was a beautiful young Italian boxer who was very talented, very good, said to be a real threat for the medal, and she met a transitioned person. Boom. He gave her a little jab. Boom. She backed up. Oh, what was that? She said, I've never been hit that hard in my life. A jab is like the light one before you hit the right. Then, boom, another jab. She said, I, I can't. I give up. Then there was a second boxer. The same thing happened. Congratulations. They both won gold medals. How about that? They both won gold. Congratulations to them. It's so demeaning to women, I don't understand. Who would, who would want men to be able to play? The volleyball player got hit the other day, recently, with a smash from a transitioned person. She said, I've never seen anything like it. The ball came out. She was knocked unconscious, probably won't play again. The weightlifting records tell. For years, they had held up. They couldn't, a quarter of an ounce here. A quarter of an ounce there, they couldn't do it. The record is broken by hundreds of pounds. We got to get back to sanity in this country. We have to get back to sanity. We will defend the Second Amendment, restore free speech, and we will secure our elections once and for all. Everyone will prosper. Every family will thrive. And every day will be filled with joy, opportunity, and hope. But for that to happen, we must defeat Comrade Kamala Harris, and we are to stop the country-destroying liberal agenda once and for all. We're going to do it. We have to stop it. We, we're going to save our country. Our country, if it doesn't win this election, I believe is finished. I believe it. We cannot come back much. They will have 100 million of these people in here with another four years. 100 million people. If you think you have a nice house, have a migrant enjoy your house because a migrant will take it over. A migrant will take it over. It will be Venezuela on steroids. So get everyone you know and vote. We want a landslide that's too big to rig. On November 5th, we will save our economy. We will rescue our middle class. We will reclaim our sovereignty and restore our borders. We will put America first, and we will take back our country. Together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America healthy again. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. We will make America free again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much, Wisconsin.